Hello and welcome to another episode of Lamer's Corner. Alright guys, today we're talking about eggs. We're talking about breeding, we're talking about kibble, we're talking about eggs, we're going to talk about how to make an egg farm, we're going to talk about all that stuff over a couple episodes here guys. It's not going to just be smashed into one episode, we're going to hit one or two episodes. Um, today we're going to be talking mostly about the egg farm um, and kibble and things of that nature. So guys, let's go ahead and get right into it um, and let's start off with um, talking about breeding a little bit. So guys, when you have two dinosaurs, you have to put them on wander. Um, they have to be ready to mate, they have to be wandered, um, and they have to stay near each other. So you may normally make confined herbs for them breeding. However, once they breed, they drop out this egg that's glowing red. That means it's ready to be incubated, you incubate it. We'll get into that in the next episode um, about specifics of breeding. But when that egg hatches, um, there's a timer that says it needs care um, for imprinting. Imprinting increases its stats, and also when the rider's on there, it increases the stats while the rider's on there. Here's the big thing, guys. When it, when it asks for care has a 1 in 3 chance of asking for kibble. Now that kibble is not specific to the dinosaur, it's specific to a list that the neighbor can request. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go over that list. As you can see behind us, we've got our egg farm. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go through these one by one. Um, and not all of them are in here because some of them we functionally use elsewhere. So, guys, here we go. Alright, so these are all of ours right here. Um, as you can see, um, one of the catches is I do use it as an allies, um, and it still works, but we'll get into that here in a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a list on the screen of all the kibbles that a dinosaur can ask for on non-scorched earth servers for when it asks for imprinting kibble. And that list is Ankylos, Dilophosaurus, Dimetrodon, Dimorphodon, Dodo, Gallimimus, Lystrosaurus, Pachy, Parasaur, Pterodon, Raptor, Stego, Trike, Terror Bird, and Turtle. So that's the list, guys. Those are the basic ones you need. That's just for eggs, for kibble, that they can request. So we're saying that when they go to imprint, those are the list of the eggs that they can request for kibble. So, as you can see, we've got all those dinos in here, except for the Ankylos. Those are somewhere else because they're working dinos. We use them. We have enough of them that we really don't use them, and we breed them. Um, and as we showed you guys on the last up, on a couple episodes ago about the scoop, that's why they stay somewhere else. So, as you guys can see, we've got these guys right next to each other. They all have hearts. Um, reason that you guys want to have a pair of each um, in, your, in your egg pen is because if you don't have a mated pair... Um, by themselves. So if you just have a female dodo, let's go just a female dodo. Um, this is on normal server settings. This is talking about officials and everything. It's going to take, on average, one every 34 minutes you'll get an egg. That's one every 34 minutes you'll get egg. However, if you get the opposite sex or male dodo and put them next to each other, that drops to 17 minutes. So one every 17 minutes. Then, if you see this little egg pulsing right here, We'll turn around, and there's these obby raptors. Hi, obby raptors. Um, we do have two of them right next to each other. They're male mate boosters. As you can see I've got an obby raptor egg sitting right there. Those decrease it even more. Um, and those are down to 11 minutes and 20 seconds then. So you're talking about one egg every 11 minutes. And those eggs can stay a while based upon the spoiling time of the server. So now that we've got this sewing, um, how do I get my obby raptors to stay right here and stay in here? Because they have to be on wander. So once I place these, these obby raptors in here, um, I have to put them on wander, and mine aren't running around. So the trick is, is you just put a bunch of stone in them, make them encumbered, and while they're on wander, they give everyone this egg symbol. Um, remember, only females can lay eggs. Now, so we've got all these males, we've got all these pairs, as you guys can see. We've got our Dimetrodons, we've got our Lystros, we've got our Morphodons, we've got our Dilos, Turtles. Um, levels don't matter in egg farm, guys. Um, you're not trying to protect them, you're not fighting with them, they're just sitting in here dropping eggs. Um, they're pretty much just a egg factory at this point. Um, so here's the thing, guys. This is going to take up, as you can tell, this is a ton of dinos. And if you've got that 120 cap on, um, that's for us on Xbox, that's a lot of dinos to be giving up just to a cap. So here's what you guys do. You go, you make a second account on Xbox. It just takes an email address. As long as it stays on your Xbox, it's fine. They sign up. You have them join your ARC. You have them ally with your tribe, and you give them all your dinos. All your egg dinos. 
Because as long as you have a feeding trough, as you see right here, is owned by your tribe, and those dinosaurs are in their ally, they get to eat off your feeding trough. So if you keep your feeding trough full, you're golden. That's it. You don't have to have those dinos on your queue, and then they just sit in here, and they're someone else's dinos. So you guys can save your queue space. That's a big trick. All right, so then everyone asks, you know, how do I make a dino pen? I made mine a little bit bigger, just in case we decide to have more dinos. Um, you can see we have a Megalosaurus up there. Um, because we, we need that for the Therizino, and we've got some extra dinos in here, and those are for dinos that you want to, to breed, um, or not breed, but tame. Um, so we've got like Carnos and things like that for dire bears and things. Um, I will send, a, I put a link to the full list of all the kibbles and the dinos they tame, um, it'll be in the description, guys. Um, so the next thing is, is we need to build our dino pen. So now we need to understand what dinos we need, how we need to get them. Um, let's go ahead and look at this dino pen. So it's just a simple pen. It's just open. It's got the dino gate in it. Um, it needs nothing special. Nothing really moves. I've got them all on ignore commands and everything like that. So there's nothing worried about it. Um, but here's the big catch. On Arc, the first thing to render is dinosaurs. Then the next thing to render is the building. So what will happen is if you go away and come back to your base, the dinosaurs will render first, then the building. So all of your eggs and poop will fall to the ground. So if I built this on straight foundations, they'll get stuck in the foundations and you'll lose about 75 to 80% of your eggs. And this is my guesstimation based on experience. So all my egg farms, I build on stilts, whether it's one high, two high, or whatever. So that when it renders, and we're gonna go ahead and show you guys, boom, those, those are dodos out here, but they're dropping the eggs through because of the render difference. So if you can see, we just have eggs laying all over the place over here. Um, and those are because of the render issues. So make sure you guys put these things on stilts, otherwise you won't, you won't get these eggs. Lima, all these eggs would be stuck in foundations and you wouldn't even get all these eggs that are in here. And that's not a clean if I drove away now. Um, also guys, um, as you can see, we've got some bigger dinos out here um, because we like to keep them close. Spinos, Dipodeccuses, uh, Brontos, um, but we use those, but they stay close. As long as they have that little egg pulse, they get the bonus. I wish none of them do right now because <laughs> we moved them around recently. Um, so that's what we guys got to do. That's how you guys have to build this thing. We've got turrets on it. We've painted the American flag on top of ours. Looks kind of cool. Um, but that's the egg farm basics right there, guys. Um, that's what you guys need to get. Um, as I said, I'm including the full list. Oh, dear, you're my little You're so cute. Hey, my Oh, you can see peace. All right. Um, so that's what you guys have to have. Those are the ones for the specific egg length. Now, that doesn't include all the other dinos you have. Um, all the basic dinos we're talking about, you know, the decoruses and stuff. That's why I added, if you see, we have got trikes. That wasn't on the list. We got carnos. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there's the megalosauruses or for therizinos. Um, we've got brontos, diploducuses, and we've got spinos all near us. Those are because you need them for other tames, other things that are going on. Quetzals are at another, another door. We've got rexes in another place, and we've got dimorphodon, or not dimorphodons, oviraptors near those. So we have multiple oviraptors to make sure I dinos get the egg boost. However, I will say this, guys. As you see here, even with the ally thing, you have to have an extra oviraptor nearby. So I've got these two oviraptors sitting here, and they're, they're giving this whole egg like, pet. However, that does not cross across, go across allies. So if you see these oviraptors sitting here, this Megasaurus is not getting the bonus, even though he should, because he's not in the same tribe. They have to be in the same tribe to get the bonus. So that's the difficult part right there. And I just noticed, if you guys notice, here's the range max. You are asking what the range max is? Right here. Look at these little scorpions not getting it. But then again, I remember reading something. So we'll back them up real quick. Well, we'll get them later. We'll fix them later. And we'll get those scorpions back in range so they can lay eggs faster. Um, so that's going to be the look for your egg pen. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at breeding in general. So we're going to go ahead and head in over here. And I apologize, and I'll take this nice and slow. Um, we're going to get some render issues because we all know about how the frame rate of big bases and everything goes. We're going to fly past this here real quick, real slow, and get up to our egg laying area, fertilized egg mating area. So you guys can kind of see what it's talking about. This is only for smaller dinos that fit in dinosaur gates. And what we do is you open this little gate right here and bam, you place them in here. Now, and then you close the door and then you enable wandering. Um, I can actually pause if you guys want here. Actually what I'll do is I will go ahead and lay an egg real quick. So we'll go ahead, catch up with you guys here in a second. Just give me one moment. I'll get two dinosaurs in here and we'll breed those babies. We'll see you guys here in a minute. 
Okay guys, welcome back. We're here uh, with our two dinos that we're going to be breeding together real quick. Um, we've got Alexis Jr. and we've got Johnny. They both have color mutations inside of them. Um, so we're going to go ahead um, and I'm going to show you guys really quick a couple things that you need to look at. So this is our pterodon um, that we've been breeding up the ancestry line. As you can see here, um, it's got multiple generations. It's got one color mutation that's those pink wings that you guys see. Um, and technically it's generation four. Now, how do I know it's generation four? So you have to match on both the maternal and paternal lines the generation levels. So you can see here on the left on the maternal, there's up to three generations on the paternal, it's four. However, because you don't have a fourth one maternal, you can't count it as a fifth generation. So it's only a fourth generation on this female. And then we actually breeded uh, one of these with another tribe's dinosaur uh, because they had some really cool yellow mutations that we're trying to get. So as you can see, this is a generation three, so we're not going too far backwards, uh, but we wanted to breed it with some new um, colors and get some cool colors going for this. So we're really excited about this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to breed these two guys real quick because I do need to replace America, unfortunately. Um, and so what you do is you go right into the inventory and you hit Enable Wandering. So you can see now it says it's ready to mate. So on this one it says Enable Wandering, ready to mate. You enable Wandering. And then you see those hearts pulsing above them. That means the mating is going on. If you go to the female, you can see the mating progress. As long as they stay near each other, you should be fine. And that's what we've got this little pen in here for. Um, I know it's become nighttime and you guys are just seeing giant green lights because um, we're in our kitchen here, but this will get the point across. Color is not going to matter right now. Um, and we'll do another episode where I show you guys what a dinosaur we got out, the brand new dinosaur. We'll talk about kibble some more. And we'll go through that stuff from the walking and all the different things and the percentages and all that kind of stuff. And I'll try to give you guys as much information as possible. So as you can see, um, we try to keep, we, I try to body block her as long as she stays relatively close. You can see how close they are right now. The mating stays. Um, they're pretty much across this room from each other. Um, and they still can mate and they're still fine. They're going to move around a bit. But that's why you put them in confined space because they can technically fly otherwise. Um, just to show you guys how big this room is, it is one, two, three, four wide. It is four wide by three wide. So it's four by three. Um, it's just a small room. It's four high, so you can fit a dino gate in there so you can get everything you want in there. Um, and let's go ahead and keep an eye on Alexis Jr. here because she's going to drop an egg, um, and we'll see it. So normally you guys know how eggs come out is they come out just standard colors, and they've got their standard little eggs. Um, and we'll show you here in a minute because um, he's mating very quickly, actually. Um, we've got our mating stuff up a little bit higher, obviously. This is my dedicated server. Um, so our stuff's going to be a little bit faster than if you were on a public server um, or a non-boosted server. Um, ours isn't crazy high, like some of the stuff I've seen out there, um, but to each their own. So we're going to almost be done here. So you can see that mating progress is slowly increasing. It tells you who she's mating with. You can mate multiple females with one male at one time. Um, after she finishes mating, um, actually what's going to happen, she's going to get a cool down timer, meaning that she's going to have a certain amount of time before she can mate again. Males can mate again right away. Um, they can mate, 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 doesn't matter. Now the female, it's a different story. So here she goes. She's going to go ahead and do like a little animation and boom, there's our egg. There's our brand new Spakin dinosaur egg. And it's right here. You can see it's picked up. It tells you who the parents are. Oh boy. Alexis, stop it. Stop it, Alexis. You need to go away. So I'm going to move her real quick, guys. <laughs> Just so I can actually show you guys this egg real quick. All right, there we go. So there's that egg. You can see it's incubating. Um, because we've got these 12 air conditioners right here, and that's the magic number, it's 12. Everyone says, well, why 12 air conditioners? Well, because if you have to do gigas, they need more air conditioners. So not have to, if you choose to, do do gigas, um, they take air conditioners. Every dino takes a certain amount of time um, for breeding and all that kind of stuff. Um, ours times are messed up a little bit on here. Um, they've got imprinting timers and everything like that. Um, for the standard servers, um, the imprinting timers, the difference is it can be anywhere from three hours to four hours. So you can get a four hour imprinting timer or a three hour imprinting timer. The more times you hit the imprint, the more lucky you get. Um, so we end up getting uh, normally about one uh, to two imprints on each of our pterodons. It depends. Normally it's one and we only get a small percentage. As you can see here, I'll go into Lexus um, and it's only 68% because we only get one imprint. We normally miss the second one, um, but we normally we can sometimes get the second one too. Um, oh, let's go ahead and stop wandering you. Stop it. Bed Derridon. We're going to disable that wandering real quick. All right, there we go. Um, let's have him follow us. Um, bring it over here. And then I'll stop. And he'll go ahead and lay it in that corner for me. I hope. Yep, he's up there. So he'll be fine. So we're going to watch this. I'm going to show you guys. Um, 
and I'll move this egg real quick for you. Um, we'll get it primed, and then for the next episode, what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll hatch this ter- we'll, we'll hatch this pterodon, we'll pay attention to it, we'll see the babies come out and all that kind of stuff, um, and we'll try to get everything uh, completed on the other side of this. But that's the basics right there, guys. Um, that is the basics. You gotta get two dinosaurs together. You made them. You gotta have your egg farm ready, ready because if you don't have an egg farm ready, there's a chance you won't have the kibble you need. If you don't have the kibble you need, you miss the imprint and bad things happen. If you don't get the imprint, you don't get the stat boost and all that kind of stuff. So it's really important. Make sure you have your egg farm first. That's the first thing you guys should do. You build your base. This is my my believing. This is how I always do it. Is I build my base. I get my base ready. I get the dinos that I need for that base. Then I get my egg farm up. As soon as I get my egg farm up. Then I start going to tame all the dinos I want, the rexes and all that stuff. Because then I start breeding them, I can just breed them right away and not have to worry about having all that extra kibble. Now, one last thing before I leave you guys here. I put, we put our egg pen right here, right next to our kitchen. Reason being is all I have to do is if this dino asks for Listro kibble, I just run right over here and run right over my kibble pen. And bam, kibble for days. I need to put my Rex kibble back in there. <laughs> but I've got all my kibble. I've got Lystro kibble. I've got Dimorphodon kibble um, and everything like that. So we'll, next episode, while we're breeding that baby, I'll talk about making kibbles. As you guys can see, we've got all kinds of farms in here and stuff like that, and cookers and grills and all kinds of stuff. We'll get into that whole methodology later, guys. Um, so that's on the next episode. So this has been Egg Farm 101. Go ahead, guys. Subscribe or like. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what other things you guys want to know or whatever things you want to see us do that are stupid and fun. Um, so go ahead. Keep up with us. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.